Now we're going to talk about COVID testing at Ireland's airports. It could possibly replace the 14-day isolation period that's currently in place for incoming travellers, and of course, which is very, very hard to monitor. Anyway, that's according to uh, the Minister Eamon Ryan, the Communications Minister, and it comes as Irish MEPs seek to avoid quarantine or isolation upon return to these shores, because they're over and back to Brussels and Strasbourg all the time. I'm joined by the editor of Air and Travel magazine, Owen Curry. Owen, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Now, I know you're someone who, you know, has cast a cold eye on what the government's doing in terms of air travel and inconsistencies and the green list and so on. Are we moving towards something that is workable or is it too cumbersome to ever work? Would that it would be so simple, Pat, that we'd introduce the airport testing and everything would solve itself. Airport testing comes with a whole raft of problems of their own, which have been highlighted by NEFIT themselves. Uh, one of the major thing is uh, the false positives it generates, the large numbers that you're dealing with and the prospect then of it diverting resources away from other areas. Um, it comes back to the common theme that uh, listeners will associate me with at this stage, that travel is only less than 2% of the cases, but very high visibility. And is somewhere when everybody's you know worried and panicking and everything that we've been through since March, the horror that we are when we're looking for a solution, travel pops up as uh, an obvious candidate, but isn't one. One of the issues, of course, when you're traveling, um, you are responsible for yourself. Uh, you may touch surfaces in airports and therefore you should wash your hands, bring hand sanitizer. You should wear a mask on board uh, the, the plane. There's an argument, I don't know whether you agree with it or not, that travelers are actually very vigilant about their own uh, personal safety because they see themselves in the danger zone. Not just an argument, Pat, because as you know, uh, June the 15th was the opening date across Europe. The European CDC, the health commissioner, everybody was watching what would happen when aviation returned, which it effectively did a couple of weeks later on July the 1st. Would new infections uh, track the, where the travellers were travelling, the major airports, Amsterdam is the busiest airport in Europe at the moment. And it didn't happen. Uh, if it had happened, the whole travel debate would be where a lot of people in Ireland see it, is that travel is you know, responsible for a very large uh, amount of infection and it's a way of keeping uh, coronavirus at bay. But if you look at the map of Europe that's produced by the European CDC, it doesn't have a black Spain, even though uh, Spain has got over 200 cases over 14 days rolling average. It has spots all over at Yeda, Murcia, or Bad, other places are less than Ireland. And when international travel resumed, the cases didn't follow the, the travellers. The cases still continue to do exactly what they had been doing before. The sort of clusters we saw in our own country in meat plants and in uh, particular suburbs, they tend to, it tends to um, follow um, communi uh, communities and very often the immigrant communities in European countries, it doesn't travel with international travel because the sense of personal responsibility, as you alluded to, it would be very high among international travellers. Owen, I, I actually, I, I think that people who are going from A to B for business, uh, whether they're flying to Paris or Amsterdam or Berlin or whatever they're, they're flying, they want to keep themselves safe and they would like to be able to do that business and get home and they can watch themselves. Uh, however, what the government is probably concerned about, and this may be the reason why they're prepared to uh, contemplate change, is that the holiday season is over. The idea of hordes of people going to Spain and Portugal and France and Italy, uh, mixing with the tourists from all over the place in the bars, the pubs, the restaurants, on the beaches and so on, um, that's the kind of uh, cross-infection they were probably trying to avoid. Not so much the business traveller who often will never eat the meal that's offered on the plane anyway, that kind of thing. You're absolutely right. They, you know, there have been very high profile videos. You saw, I mean, listeners will have seen the video of the British uh, stag party jumping on the cars in Magaluf very early in the process. 
they um, stati- you know in terms of uh, the amount of uh, coverage it gets um, and this is the nature of travel it does get a, a very high coverage uh, versus the statistical impact of it would not equate but that actually brings the politicians into it in another way they really can't be if there's very heavy coverage very high coverage of a particular aspect of the uh, approach to coronavirus that gets a lot of coverage and a lot of uh, social media comment. It's very, very difficult uh, to move against it. I think academics would call it the availability effect. It it skews testing when a cohort that's more available rather than the genuine cross-section gets sampled. And in the context of what we're talking about, while travel is only less than 2% of cases, it's very highly visible. And when people are looking for uh, a solution, which we all are, uh, a simple solution, um, something that st- like closing the airports in the early phase of it and airport testing now uh, are, offer, you know, very immediate solutions. Why aren't we okay. doing this? But is this all about um, the, the developments in medicine? Because uh, we know, Partly. for example, uh, that if there's a vaccine, everything will change. But equally, if there is a rapid test, a saliva test, where you can have people in holding areas in airports for a short while, while they're tested, 15 minutes later, you have the result. If you're positive, obviously, you have to go into some sort of isolation. If you test negative, off you go about your business. It doesn't mean you don't fill in the form, just in case uh, someone on your plane has tested positive or whatever, but that it would allow you at least uh, to, to go home. A couple of points there. Um, the air, aviation industry is really good at safety. They've, uh, you know, got plane crashes down to something like one a year. So safety of their customers, what they do. And one of the things they have been offering to the health authorities, including Ireland, is all the passenger information. They have the details because they need to contact people with boarding cards. So when something arises, as has happened in a, about four cases across Europe since uh, the beginning of July, where somebody has shown up on an aircraft that has been... Um, that has been infected. They are in a position to supply health authorities with all the information. There is no need for locator forms and quarantines and they're able to react immediately to that. That would have predated coronavirus. That would have gone back to Ebola and all because aviation is international. GDPR. And um, indeed, GDPR, it can be, uh, GDPR is a concern. And as we all, this has been battled over the airwaves. But when health and safety are indeed security uh, come into question, GDPR uh, tends to be overridden. Uh, people are treating coronavirus like it was a terrorist threat in the terms of the way uh, human rights and constitutional rights and everything like that have been um, derogated or invaded. So the second point there, and it goes back to what I said at the minute, if it if the antigen tests um, and there are different antigen tests were showing up the level of accuracy that the health professionals would trust them and if they came in at the right cost or you know they are coming in at a lower cost than they were at the 190 at the beginning of this it would be the instant solution and every country in Europe would be doing it. The countries that have gone with it have run into the problems that Neffet have warned us about. Diversion of resources away from uh, other areas and a very high number of tests for a very small number of cases. I don't have the up-to-date in Italy. Italy brought it in for four countries. They were the first to do it on large scales. But one of their airports went through nearly 40,000 people to get four cases. It's not right. a, a good okay, uh, implementation see, of resources. economic argument and, uh, and about diverting resources. We have to leave it there. Owen, Owen Corrie, editor of Air and Travel Magazine. Always Thank a you pleasure, Pat.